Today, uh, what we're going to do is because we're getting a lot of questions uh, from clients and from people on the outside just saying, you know, am I going to have to end up canceling my benefit plan? And, you know, that's all ultimately going to end up being uh, your call. But at the, we do find that there are a lot of options that we can put into place before we get to that point. Uh, so number one, uh, people will typically, uh, they're not interested in canceling their benefit plan. They're interested in, in saving costs during this time and making sure that they can be a little bit more budget conscious. So uh, we're going to cover some of those issues, how you can cut some of your costs, without losing um, much of your benefits at all. And then what we'll do is we'll get into some questions after that. And uh, so we'll go from there, thank you. All right, so. So the first thing that I'm gonna talk about here, uh, if everybody can see that hopefully, uh, is your minimum plan requirements. So this is what you need to know if you're looking to cut benefits or you're looking to pare things down for the time being until there's a little bit of recovery in the economy. So uh, number one, uh, if you are planning to cut back on your benefits or make some changes to your benefit program, one thing that you need to be aware of is that if you are planning to participate in the government's work share program that's going on where the government's going to uh, help you with staffing costs and, and, and part of wages, you do have to keep your group benefit plan in place and you're going to have to cover uh, the benefits as they were covered before this shortage happened. So uh, keep that in mind before you make any uh, serious plan changes. But, uh, but as far as what your in specific insurance company will allow you to do, um, you know, this is, a, this is again a very broad generalization. So, so you'll have to contact your specific insurance provider um, or contact us, our office and we can help you with more specific carrier uh, issues. So uh, the way that benefits plans work, typically depending on the size of your company, is you have to include a minimum of two to three lines. And basically your lines are, uh, you know, the, the items that your benefit plan covers, okay? So you can see uh, the life and AD&D, which is your life insurance and your accidental de death and dismemberment benefit, those are mandatory on most benefit plans and it's very unlikely that you're gonna be able to cut that, okay? Critical illness is an optional line. So critical illness is if somebody's diagnosed with something life-threatening, then this will have some benefit to deal with those costs. Our optional benefits still have them on there, but it's also uh, very good coverage to have in place and you may not want to touch them. Uh, Short-term disability, uh, so sometimes that's referred to as weekly indemnity. Um, is present on a lot of plans. Uh, also, at this time, with people quarantining and you know they're being medical, you being medically required to stay at home, these short-term disc plans are quite valuable. So you might not want to look at touching that. Long-term disability. Now, this so disability uh, benefits are going to be very dependent on whether or not you're planning to do your staff um, at this time. So. If you are off, uh, their disability benefits aren't going to cut their on a leave. So that's, that's something that, that you can probably look at uh, if you are laying staff off. Uh, sometimes return to work date, uh, like with a maternity leave, they would pick up that disability claim when they return to work, but I'm not sure that's going to happen in this situation. Uh, so your healthcare coverage, so that's your prescription drugs, your medical, your travel, um, you know, vision, uh, massage, all of that. Okay, so that that uh, is an optional benefit. Um, it's something that you can include in your plan, but you can also opt out of it, out of it um, as long as you keep uh, two or three of these benefits. Uh, your dental, which is pretty straightforward. So that's your basic dental services, your endodontic and periodontic, which is like root canals, gum and bone, that type of thing, uh, as well as your major coverage. So bridge work, uh, caps, crowns, uh, and orthodontic. 
Now, these again are optional benefits. Um, now, your, your employee assistance program or EAP, which is basically referred to as um, your counseling services, your, so that could, could include your face-to-face -face counseling services, your, um, you know, anything that would cover you for, um, for services that would be needed uh, in that type of a, a situation, those would be uh, covered under your EAP. And if you do remove it, it's not really an optional benefit. So it won't, uh, it won't apply to your two to three lines of benefits. So let's just take a look at what that impact is. So because there is no uh, basic dental coverage as of right now, basically dentists are shut down uh, orthodontists, anything like that, uh, you know, you're probably safe to remove that line of benefit from your plan. Um, so what you can do is just take a look here. This is a, you know, this is a company that would have 50 employees and this would be the impact of just removing that dental benefit for the time being. Now this isn't necessarily, well, this is probably not going to be a permanent change, but this is something that you can put in place in the meantime for maybe these next few months that will be a tremendous cost savings and uh, your employees can access them anyway at this point, uh, just based on the fact that these, these practices aren't even open. Now, something to be aware of, if you do have major dental coverage on the plan, um, or in some cases, even basic dental coverage, uh, dentists are still seeing patients on an emergency basis. So if you do need an emergency root canal or, or like a wisdom teeth or an infection, you may want to keep just a small healthcare spending account for your staff, just in the instance that, that a cost like that jumps up in the next two to three months here, so that uh, they do have some coverage for that if they, they do need an emergency dental procedure. But I mean, the chances, I mean, your whole, whole staff isn't gonna require that. Maybe you'll have, you know, two, three people who end up having an emergency situation during this uh, time. So, so you know, it, you're still gonna be far ahead of the game to, to be removing that, that coverage for the time being if you do need to cut some costs. Now, uh, again, you have your long-term disability, you can remove that. You have your short-term disability, you can remove that. Your critical illness, all, all of those benefits can be removed. But more what we're focusing on right now is cutting some of the unusable benefits. So, uh, so paramedicals, for example, massage, chiropractor, acupuncture, those are very highly utilized benefits. And those practitioners are all closed at this time. So your employees aren't able to access that coverage. And if, if you need to look at saving some costs in the meantime, removing those from the plan temporarily might be a really good solution for you uh, because they do open up uh, some significant cost savings. And again, your dental, so dentists, orthodontists, with the exception of emergency, um, these are some unusable areas where you could really free up some room on your plan. So this would be the impact of remo removing the unusable benefits. So when you remove uh, benefits like the dental and you remove the massage, physio, chiropractor from your plan, you'll see here the difference uh, with this particular plan is a savings of about $100,000 a year. Uh, so that is pretty significant when you're looking at evaluating your costs on an ongoing basis. Now, a year is extreme. That's probably not going to be the situation, but three, four months in a row, that, that uh, is absolutely something that's reasonable to, to, uh, for the foreseeable future here. So I think that it is reasonable to assume that we could maybe remove those uh, from the plan. Now, this is the impact to the employer. So this is showing you at the very bottom here, uh, so you, you obviously see the monthly investment, but at the very bottom you see the impact of the employer pays 80% and if the employer pays 50%. So the figure on the right hand side is the uh, situation where we've cut the unusable benefits. And you can see that when the employer pays 80%, the savings are very significant. And uh, even if the employer is paying 50%, that's still a, a very significant cost savings when you take that over the course of a year. 
Um, I've also factored in there on the right hand side. Let's say you had during the next three months, you had $3,000 worth of um, you know, healthcare spending account claims where an employee needed to access emergency dental services or something like that. Um, you know, if you left that open for them, that's probably a reasonable figure of what you could see come through there in a three month period. So that, so that portion there, so that's if we just focus on cutting the unusable benefits off of your plan. Now, uh, you know, if you are laying staff off and that's a situation that you're running into right now, then you can even take that further, right? I mean, you can remove the long-term disability, you can remove the short-term disability, uh, even the critical illness if an employee's not actively at work uh, will likely not pay out. So, so if you just focused on covering the basics that the employee is going to need while they're on layoff, uh, it will it will make your your savings quite significant and ensure that you have a plan to return to once this all clears up, which it will. We just don't know what that time frame is going to look like. Um, now, uh, the other question that we get a lot is, what do we do when a staff member uh, is on leave? how do we collect those premiums from that staff member? So, so essentially this all comes down to, it's just like we spoke about in our last webinar, having some sort of a written policy around your group benefits plan that indicates how an employee is going to be uh, paying you and for how long you're gonna extend benefits while that employee is on leave. Typically in these type of situations, the employee will pay the full cost of the benefits and they would write you a check for that amount um, before they leave, okay, if you, if you are laying staff off during that time period. Uh, so, so if you're saying three months, they would write you a check for three months worth of benefits, and then you would um, essentially, if, if it extends longer than three months, you can uh, either reevaluate re that continuation of benefits, or you can just do a, a, a strict termination from the plan and then deal with the, the uh, situation when, when all this clears up, which could be longer than three months down the road. Um, so essentially that's, that's how employers are saving some of the costs. Um, you know, it is, it is pretty uh, business as usual to ask your staff to be paying uh, for the benefits while they're on leave, or a, an employer could pay for uh, some or all of the benefits if that's their, um, if that's their wish, so. Um, and then finally, you know, we get into, do we keep or do we cut the disability benefits? And in that situation, you know, it's really going to depend. Uh, if you're keeping your staff at work, but they are on reduced hours, then you're going to need to contact the insurance provider to make sure that their disability benefits are still going to be payable at the full amount, even though they're working reduced hours. If the insurance company says that they're, re they're working reduced hours, so we're not going to pay out disability claims, then it might be a situation where you want to pause those, uh, that long-term disability until such time as everybody's returned to work and working full hours. As well, when an employee goes on to disability, you're going to, um, you're going to enter that uh, leave with the understanding that disability benefits aren't going to be payable. And in that situation, you're probably going to want to pause the payments on those disability um, premiums and wait until the uh, employees and everybody is back to work to continue on with your disability plan. So those are kind of some of the areas that I wanted to focus on just so that uh, you know, you can look at, at, at discussing some, some cost savings, um, a lot of um, situations where you can just cut some costs without having to remove your whole benefit program. Uh, what it's looking like is if you do remove your whole benefit program, it may have impacts on your work sharing ability, but also um, getting people back onto the plan when this all comes, uh, when this is all said and done, uh, you know, we may have to do a full re-enrollment of the plan at that point. Uh, insurers haven't been very clear on to how they're going to handle that. So, um, so yeah, so what we'll do is we'll post this uh, so that people can review this in the future. And then if you have any questions or anything that you want to review, just let us know and we'll go from there.